So today I'd like to do a quick tutorial on how to create an atomic P orbital. Uh, for this, I, I have to give a huge shout out to Bradley Animations for releasing these free geometry node setups. Um, it's a, what I rely on for a majority of this tutorial. I'll leave links to his videos and to this link below in the description, of course. Um, without it, I wouldn't have been able to make any of this. So yeah, let's start off. Begin by opening a new Blender project. I personally deleted the default light because I don't need that for the moment, but I am going to keep the default cube because I do want to show you guys basically how this this works. So I'm going to upload the, or I'm going to append the, um, the volume file over here, the preset 1.0.13, and I'm going to just download all of these uh, geometry nodes into the node tree. And just to start off, I'm going to open up with the G fill volume and you'll see it kind of looks a little different, but not too significantly. The shading looks a little weird, but trust me, this is where all the magic happens. So after you do the G fill volume, put in the instance on points. So I'm going to add in my instances here. Now we have a whole bunch of cubes on just all of these vertices, which is something. It's not what I want, though. So we're going to add in a distribute points and faces and boom, we have a bunch of cubes just all over the place. They're all jammed to one cube. And from here, I want to make a couple of adjustments, i.e. the scale. So I add in a value node over to the scale so that it doesn't look as quite as much of a mess. And you'll notice that you can change the distance and the mid-level within the G fill volume. You can get a bunch of different arrangements here. Uh, you can also adjust the density in the C within distribute on points, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, play around with that as much as you'd like to. It's for whatever you think looks best, I guess. Um, now this is all well and good, a nice little cube with a bunch of little cubes, but I want a little more chaos. Uh, so I'm going to add in this G vector noise, um, translate instances if I want to change where things are positioned and a set position. So connect that G vector noise over to position and you notice, boom, there's a little more chaos. Amazing. You can uh, change the distortion. You can change the roughness, the frequency, detail, and um, I cannot read this last one because my eyes are very bad. I'll, I'll have it in the notes somewhere, <laughs> but you can just adjust these settings until you find a look that you, you like. But in the end, this isn't my final project. It's just a demonstration of the dope Geony nodes that Bradley published. We're going for a P orbital. So add in a UV sphere, select a vertex mode, you're going to want to select proportional editing so that we can take one point and affect all of the others that are surrounding it. You want to stretch that point down until you get like a hot air balloon kind of look. Um, there you go. Select all of the points by pressing A, drag it all the way up to the top so that our origin point stays at the very center and at the tip of this little balloon. And yeah, I think this looks pretty good. We don't need to do anything else. It's it's just our container for all of our points. All right, so let's do this in order this time. Add in a G fill volume. Can you hear my cat? He is very talkative right now. All right, so add in distribute points on faces and you'll see we have a bunch of just identityless points floating around in space giving us an idea of where these are going to exist. Add in a set position node and I'm gonna add in the the vector noise node here just for fun. Move around in 3D space. It looks looks alright, looks good. I can adjust a few things to make them fit my taste. And what I'm doing here is just good practice. Um, I'm taking the group input input, sorry, and placing them into the different nodes that I may want to adjust later when I'm animating. So just general good practice. Uh, try to name everything as uh, aptly, descriptively, and succinctly as possible so that we know what we're changing when we're just in the general layout and we're trying to animate. 
it's just good practice. Uh, sometimes I don't do it because I'm me. I'm lazy sometimes, but this is just this is just good practice to have in general. All right, so I'm going to just drag up the bottom and switch over to the timeline so I can just add in a couple of uh, rough animations. So if you change the vector noise displacement, you'll see uh, how how it could potentially look with all those different values. And I'm trying to figure out what settings I, I want, what kind of look I'm trying to go for. This isn't an exact science, at least for me. Um, I'm just going for something that looks chaotic, that looks a little cray cray, but you know, there's still enough of a smooth move from one point to another point in 3D space. Uh, just linear interpolation mode. I'm sorry, that came out wrong. So I, I like the general look of this, and it's time for us to put on instances. So let's put in a just very basic UV sphere. It is way too big right now, so just for ease of access, I'm going to add in a value node, and I'm also going to add in a math node so that I don't have to put in a ridiculously small number um, within the value. Add in that to the very top value. Don't take a shot every time I say value, and I'm going to change the number at the very bottom until I get a general look of just lots of small points in 3D space. And yeah, I like how this looks in 3D space. It's all right. It's a, it shows that it's a cloud of possibilities, but at the suggestion of somebody in the, the Blender Science Discord, I made the decision to add in a geometry proximity um, node so that the closer that each of the instances are, <clears throat> the closer that each of these instances are to our invisible object here at the very bottom, the more likely they are to exist. So I want it to be more dense with points down here and less dense at the very top the farther away it is from the from our for our object, our invisible object at the bottom. And in addition to that, just to further emphasize that there's a greater possibility of the electrons existing near the nucleus, I'm gonna change the size a little bit. Uh, I'm sure if you guys are watching this, you probably understand that electron sizes don't change. Um, this is just this is just for aesthetics. This is just to emphasize the where it's likely going to be. So just take this with a grain of salt. This isn't this isn't um, hyper realism. This is just to, to get the idea across. Anyways, so I'm gonna add in a UV sphere here and just hide it because I really don't need to see it. It just needs to exist. It just needs to be there. And I'm just gonna adjust a, a couple of my nodes here. I'm gonna move the distribute on points um, between the set position and the instance on points here. I'm going to drag my new sphere over as an object I'm going to add in a geometry proximity node here. So add that, put the geometry node over to the target, add in a position node, and what we're going to do is we're going to add in a vector math node. So select distance, place the position from the geometry proximity over to the bottom node and the position node over to the top vector node. And I'm going to add in just a regular math node and change it over to multiply add end. I'm not going to worry about the values at the very moment. I'm just going to connect that resulting value over to the density. And you can see it does change the density quite a bit. So I'm going to change the multiplier and the add end value until I get the look that I want, which is just more points concentrated towards the bottom, less points at the top, but still some points existing in the top. And this isn't an exact science for me, at least. I'm just, I'm just changing numbers until I get something that I like. Um, I guess I'll show in what my final values are 
at the very end specifically like a high-res um, video a high-res image just something to show how that all looks and so after I find the values that I like the most I'm going to just play the animation and see how it looks when it all exists in 3d space and I think I like that I think I like how this looks I can always change it later you can always change it later so copy and paste the multiply add drag down that value node from the distance and put that into the top value of the multiply add please do not take a shot every time i say value or node um unless it's a shot of water huh <sighs> i really wish i could use different words but my vocabulary is a little limited so add in a random value node and a map range node again copy over that multiply add but change the setting over to multiply take the result from the map range drag it over to the top node within the multiply node that we just put down and then add in a combined x y and z just drag that value from the multiply node into all three of those axes x y z drag down your instance on points and add that to scale now this definitely changed things it's not the look that i want um so i'm just gonna muck around and find out what values look the best what what range within our map range looks the best what random values i want there to be there and just again i'm this isn't an exact science at least in the way that i approached it I, I just I just muddled around with numbers until I found a look that I liked. Now this is this is a, this is a step towards being better. It's not exactly what I had in mind, but I can change the scale at the moment. So just finagle around until you find a general uh size range that that you're happy with just do whatever you think looks good very willy-nilly bob ross kind of vibe and i believe i uh missed a step here so here's me correcting and you know that floating multiply add node that we had? Yeah, connect that over to the top of the multiply um, that we have with our map range and adjust the multiplier and add in value until, boom, we get a gradient look. Just keep changing those numbers until you eventually, slowly but surely, you find your way to the correct one that gives you a higher density, a higher size density at the bottom and a lower size density at the top. Now, I'm sure people who are a lot more um, in tune with geometry nodes would just know automatically uh, what values to put in, but nah, not me. I just, I just muck around and find out until I find something that I like. C'est la vie, you know, someone else that play in 3D space, figure out if I like how that looks and whether or not I want to change some parameters around. Just do whatever you think looks best. And I know that my setup is very messy. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am just very chaotic. When you do this on your own, I'd suggest cleaning up as you go instead of taking my approach, which is clean at the very end. So yeah, I think I like how this looks. And at the very end here, between instance on points and group output, I'm going to set a material. So I just add in, just select the default material, and we'll get back to that later. Just call that a chroma foreshadowing for what's to come. So like I was saying before, it's just general good practice to um, adjust your, your group input nodes and name it specifically to whatever. And here is the thing that I should have been doing from the beginning, which is organizing. Organize your space as you go so that you can visually see where each of your different parameters are being changed, like the density and where things are located. 
So here's the easy part. We're just gonna copy paste our entire thing over here, rotate it 180 degrees, hide that sphere. We don't need to see it. Um, and make sure you can't see it in rendered view either. You don't want any surprise spheres popping up. So we're gonna go over, change the position of these a little bit, just very minute changes, and boom! This is the very basic P orbital, except it looks a little too matchy-matchy. And that's because we have the same seed number. We have the same um, values for both of our setups, and don't really want that. I want there to be chaos on purpose. So I'm going to change the seed numbers so that we get a different, um, just just a different iteration of the the same underlying math. And I think this looks pretty good. So I'm just going to set up uh, the rest of our scene for for rendering. Take our camera and just adjust its placement until I generally like how the P orbital is framed. Gonna go over to the scene world and then adjust the background color. Go over to the, the rendered view also so that you can see what you're doing. And I'm gonna go over to shading. And you know that material that we set earlier? Well, here it is, we're changing it. So just for simplicity's sake, I just made it black so that it stands out against the white and changed the alpha value here, which doesn't look like it's really doing anything, but that's because I'm in the wrong rendering engine. So switch on over to cycles, do the exact same thing, and oh no, the material didn't change. Why didn't it change? <laughs> Obviously I know the answer, but at the time I I just genuinely forgot when you copy your stuff over from the previous geometry nodes, it, it creates its own material. So I just, just go back, reset that over to material, and here we go. So I'm going to change my rendering samples value over to 15 because this doesn't need to be super detailed. You get the general gist with, uh, with the smaller um, rendering value. So just let that go let that render and then compile everything all into a video at the very end and here is the final product i hope that this tutorial didn't end up being too much of a hot mess <laughs> please be kind to me this is my first tutorial that i'm posting online um yeah if if anybody has any suggestions for cleaning up my setups better <laughs> Or just has any advice in navigating geometry nodes that would I would I would appreciate it um, but here is my little project that I ended up being pretty content with hope you guys have a great rest of your day and happy blundering